How do you take this gun apart? That guy. I'm gonna have to go watch a YouTube video and figure out how to take this thing apart because I have no idea. Let's do that and I'll be right back to you. But first, here's my intro. There was a little Allen key I saw in here that I need my glasses again to find. Right here. I mean, this is a tiny little fella. It's just an L-shaped piece of wire, actually. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it, it'll be used. Remember I said my recoil spring was toolless? This is the tool required for this recoil spring. So we'll get to that in just a sec. Put these things back in here. All right. Let's get the case out of the way. Now let's see if we can field strip this guy. Here's my little doohickey. From what I saw in the video, he pulled it back so far and put the safety on. Okay. And then he pushed this guy out. And he used the magazine to do that. And use this black magazine. The other ones are too pretty to do it with. Let's see if that works. Son of a gun, it worked. How about that? And then this, his slide lock comes out like that. With that out, we're going to release the safety. And because the slide rack is on this side, we can take the barrel right off just like that. And boy, that is a tight fit, like I said. And the lower, the lower has got some way. Let's see. So just the lower and my gun, they're about the same weight, it feels like. So without the barrel, that's interesting. Uh, okay, so that's how we take that off. Let's set that over here. This is the barrel. Where this little tool comes in, here's the slide. Where this little tool comes in, pull it forward like that. Now you hold it. And you take, do you see the little hole there in the side of the recoil rod? I'm going to go ahead and set this tool in there. And now it holds it. Okay, so now it takes the tension off so I can remove it out of the gun. There it goes. Okay, it came right out. Remember, this is my first time touching this checkmate, my, C my uh, STI. I've done it a million times. So that's the recoil rod assembly. And if I wanted to, I can uh, press down on here, take the tool out, let this come up, take that, whatever that doohickey piece is called, and here's his recoil spring. Jesus, man, no wonder it's so tight. This spring has got to be twice as thick as the spring in my STI. I'm not going to take that apart, but yes, this is a much heavier spring. If he, you know, he can experiment with this spring and see uh, what weight he actually wants to make this easier to work with, and it can handle uh, softer shooting ammunition with the lighter spring. But let's go ahead and put this back together. on top you don't want to lose control of this because it will go flying there's a lot of spring tension there oh, I'm losing control of it just trying to find our friendly hole there oh okay way down there okay so here's our hole put our little doohickey in there and now it locks okay now, the other thing I saw is that this does not just slide right out. So I guess you just clean the barrel sitting here like this, or you can go through the painstaking process. And I watched the guy do it on a video. You pull this all the way forward, and this unscrews. And watch how many times, how many turns that takes to get that off. So that's that compensator or muzzle brake that is threaded onto the front of the barrel. Look at that. And it comes off, and now 
the barrel can come out and you can do whatever you have to do to it. So that's pretty slick. A lot of oil in there from the factory. Okay, that's what it's supposed to have. And you remember we saw that piece? Let's see here. This guy. So if you didn't want to have the compensator on the gun anymore, you would take this piece. Oh, we'll go ahead, we'll put it together. I'll show you what it looks like. And we'll thread that on. Da, 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 da. Million turns. It has to stay on. There's a lot of force coming through these guns, so it has to be turned quite a few times. And there it goes. So I guess we have to get this so that this is pointing down. <coughs> oh, geez. Take that towel again. And I'm use my little vise here. Don't worry, owner of the gun, it's a it's a padded vise. I just need something to grip it because I tightened it too much. Alright. So not that. Okay. Oh, I see. That gives the 11 degree crown look. And then it would go back into the gun. And I shouldn't have threaded the damn thing all the way on. But I did. So, all right, we'll try that again. So, if you wanted to convert the gun. stuff over here so if you wanted to take the, the muzzle brake compensator off you thread it all the way off like I just did and then you can replace it with this little guy which has that iron sight on top but make sure you put the barrel back in the firearm first and in, inside the slide first and then thread it on something just like this I'm going to let it slide forward a bit. And you turn and turn and turn and turn and turn. A million turns. And I feel like we're getting there now. I, don't, I want to make sure it ends up in the right spot, which it feels like right about there. Can I keep going? Ah, oh, yeah, I can keep going. the slide looks like that without the compensator with the comp without the comp and when the gun fires it goes like this into battery out of battery into battery out of battery and it locks in position very cool now let's get the uh, compensator back on get your boy what I get myself into there Let me screw this off. A lot of turning, boy. Set that off to the side. We take our compensator again. Put it back on. It was important to show this to you, though. I know it's a little tedious to watch, but it's important to show it to you. Because you need to know, A, that's how you get the barrel out of the gun, is you have to remove this threaded-on compensator. 
or B, if you want to take the comp off and use just this, uh, uh, I don't know what this would be called. I don't know, the front of the muzzle or the slide, a slide extension. I don't know what it is. Let's see if this is straight. That is perfect. Okay. So now this barrel on the slide is back in position. We're going to take our spring with our little tool that's in there. And there is a little curved section here. Same thing on the STI, by the way. That sits on top of the barrel, right? That curve will fit on top of the barrel. But you have to slide this in first. Get it down like that. And that curve is in the correct spot. Good. And what am I doing? Okay, that's it. Yeah, you work with the slide. I keep working with the slide in the in the back position. You gotta keep it in the front position. Push forward with your thumb here. Release the spring. Take the tool out. Let this come back gently. And now you're ready to go. Now it's in position. Okay, so we took our tool out. We don't want to lose that, so I'm going to set that right there off to the side for a moment. And then we are going to go ahead and put the gun, the uh, slide and barrel back onto the lower here. And again, I personally like to turn it upside down to get it started. And then I can flip the gun back upside, right side up. I'm just trying to understand what I'm doing with this guy. And I believe... Doing that right there. Let's see what happens. That's it. We're back in business. Yep. Just like that. Back in business. So let's see. What do we have on this gun? We have an ambidextrous safety right here and right here. Uh, the slide racker can be changed. Uh, there's a, an Allen key on top of the slide racker there. And you can flip this around to the other side if you want. If you flip it to this side, it's going to hit your slide mount. And it does do the same thing on mine, by the way. So luckily mine is just, I can just pull it out. There's a couple little detents there that hold it in position. Um, but uh, like I said, I could put it on this side. I just prefer it here because when I'm firing the gun, if something should jam, I'm going to just lack, rack it like that. Uh, where in this case, you're firing the gun jams, you got to take your trigger hand off and rack it or come over and rack it with this hand. Maybe, okay, maybe it's like that, but I don't know. I like it on my side better, but it's your choice. Um, but it is ambidextrous safety. This is the slide lockers on the ones on the, uh, left side of the gun push up on it it locks the slide back push up on there it locks the slide back push it down it drops the slide fire the gun let's rack it again let's put the safety on now i can't fire the gun drop the safety and it fires and that trigger feels really good boy let's see let's see if there's any play here there's a slight bit of take up about that much there and then it breaks nice clean short break let's go ahead and rack it again and release it and it, eh, it took a little bit of time to reset but that's okay not that much and then it fires again let's try that again so that's the reset on this gun let's see what this one feels like Pull the trigger. One more time. Yeah, this has some more more take up than this one does. Which maybe I can adjust some of that out of there. I'm sure I can. But I'm used to that. I mean, I do like a little bit of take up. A little bit of slop here. Not slop, but um, before the gun actually goes off, I want to be able to have my finger riding the trigger when I'm shooting it fast. And... That little bit of extra cushion, I feel, is a safe, you know, prevents me from accidentally discharging the gun. But let's see what it feels like. 
So once I get to the wall, oh, the brake is incredible. This brake felt better than this brake. This has less take up than this one does. Let's see what the reset feels like. Oh no, this is an immediate reset. Oh no. Yeah, so the reset and the brake are far superior on the STI, but the take up, there's less take up on the CZ. You gotta pull the trigger a little bit further about the same weight though i'm going to guess under two pounds pound and a half two pounds um what i do like about this checkmate is it's a metal trigger flat face trigger whereas the sti is a curved trigger and this is all plastic in here it's all polymer it's a polymer trigger but it's a freaking good polymer trigger just the trigger shoe i should say the trigger itself of course is all metal inside uh, but this trigger shoe is uh is 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 made out of anodized aluminum all right so that's the workbench portion of this video the only thing left to do is go outside and truth them baby let's go truth them because i'm two gun terry baby gotta have two guns that's all i have for now thank you for stopping by and remember to like subscribe and do what don't forget to comment like and subscribe thank you Thank you.